Okay guys, this is your lesson on section 5.8, solving radical equations. On the top of the page there's a procedure, so if you need to look up at that at any time to follow it, that's fine. So in step, uh, in problem number one, we're asked to solve the equation root x minus 2 minus 1 equals negative 5. And the first thing that I'm going to do is add 1 to both sides in order to isolate the radical. So that's going to leave me with radical x minus 2 is equal to 6. Squaring both sides, I end up getting x minus 2 is equal to 36. Adding 2 to both sides, I get x equals 38. So the answer is 38, but it's really encouraged that you check to make sure that it works. Sometimes in this section they don't work. So I'm going to show my check right here by plugging in my answer of 38. So we have uh, 38 minus 2, then minus 1 on the outside of the radical, equals 5. Well, 38 minus 2 is 36. The principal square root of 36 is 6. 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. So sure enough, 5 equals 5, and our answer checks. Let's move to number two. Number two is quite a bit harder, so really focus on this. You might even need to stop the recording and rewind and, and see it a second time. This one has two radicals, and there is a procedure here that talks about what if there's two radicals, so you might want to look at this. I'm going to start by squaring both sides. When you square the square root of a chunk, you end up just getting the chunk. So I'm going to write x minus 12. Now on the right hand side we're squaring a binomial, so I think the teaching tip here will be to write that twice. 2 minus root x, 2 minus root x. So x minus 12 I'm just going to write over again, that remains untouched. This is going to require foiling, so the first is 2, outer is minus 2 root x, inner is minus 2 root x, and last is plus x. Now these guys here are like terms, so I'm going to combine those. x minus 12 is equal to 4 minus 4 root x plus x. And now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And when I do that, this cancels out, and this cancels out, and this cancels out, and I'm left with negative 16 equals negative 4 root x. Now if I divide both sides by negative 4, these cancel out, and I'm left with root x is equal to 4, and if I square both sides, I get x is equal to 16. But like I said in question 1, it's really, really important that you check. So I'll do this off to the side. Hopefully there's going to be room for that. So I'm going to take my answer of 16 and plug it in. So I've got the square root of 16 minus 12 is equal to 2 minus the square root of 16. Well, 16 minus 12 is 4. So root 4 equals 2 minus root 16. The square root of 4 is 2. The, square, the principal square root of 16 is 4 we end up getting 2 is equal to negative 2. Now that doesn't equal each other, so we know that this answer which we got algebraically doesn't actually satisfy the original problem, so the overall answer here is no solution. This is why checking is so important. This is the final answer. Okay, moving on. In number 3 I'm going to isolate the radical 3x plus 1 to the 1 -third equals negative 5. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. Well, the reciprocal of 1 third is 3. And we know that negative 5 cubed is negative 125. And when you raise a power to a new power, you multiply, so all we're left with on the left is 3x plus 1. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. 3x is equal to negative 126. And divide by 3, and x should equal negative 42. 
but of course we should check. Something that I'm really, really encouraging and I'm modeling that for you by doing it each time myself. I practice what I preach. So here we go, check. So we have three times negative 42 plus one to the one third plus five is equal to zero. So three times negative 42 is negative 126. So we have negative 126 plus one plus five equals zero. Negative 126 plus one is negative 125. We also know that when we raise to the one third power, that's like taking a cube root. The cube root of negative 125 is negative five and negative five plus five does in fact equal zero. So our conclusion is that this guy does check. Okay, now I'm a little concerned about the lack of space for this last problem, so I'm gonna get rid of the check that we just did by putting this box around it and just having it go away. So if you need to look at that check again, rewind it and look at it again. Okay, so I'm ready to resume at this point. So for number four, I'm going to start the isolation process by adding two. So we've got five square root x plus one equals 35. I'm going to divide both sides by five. The square root of x plus one is equal to seven. I'm going to square both sides. So I get x plus one is equal to 49. And then I'm gonna subtract one from both sides, so x is equal to 48. And now for the check. So we have five times the square root of 48 plus one minus two equals 33. 48 plus 1 is 49, and the principal square root of 49 is 7. Oh, this should be a, this should be a 33. I wrote a 3, but it's really 33. Um, let me subtract 2 from this, and this should equal 33. 5 times 7 is 35. 35 minus 2 is 33. And sure enough, 30, 33 does equal 33. So our conclusion is that the answer does check, and x must be 48. Okay, for question number five, it's actually pretty easy. We've got two radicals here. They're both isolated. So what I'm going to start with is just squaring both sides. We end up getting x plus 8 equals 4 minus x. Collecting like terms, I have 2x on the left, and I've got negative 4 on the right, which means that x is equal to negative 2. And of course, I'm going to check just to make sure. So I'm going to put in uh, negative 2 plus 8. And on this side, it's going to be 4 minus a negative 2. We end up getting the square root of 6 is equal to the square root of 6. And sure enough, those are equal, so this checks. OK, moving to number 6. Um, this is going to be a little bit more complicated, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. We're going to square both sides. Now, if you have the square root of a chunk and then you square it, you're going to be left with a chunk. And we've seen that before. I think it was in number two. If I have a binomial and I square it, you have to multiply it by itself. Now, many students don't write this out twice, but I strongly encourage it. It avoids careless errors. So now I have to FOIL on the right-hand side. And I think we also did that in number two. x squared plus 2x plus 2x, or plus 4x plus 4. Now this is a quadratic equation, because there's a squared term. And to solve a quadratic equation, you need, you need to set everything equal to 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals 
x squared, I'm going to take away x from both sides, plus 3x, and I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, and that leaves us with minus 4. 0 equals, this is factorable using the FAST method, x and x, 4 and 1, plus minus. So x equals negative 4, or x is equal to 1. Now, let's check. And unfortunately, we're going to have to check 2 here, but that's just how it goes. I'm not asking you to do anything that I'm not doing myself, so I'm checking as well. All right, let's check. I'm going to check 1 first because it's just an easier number to work with. So we've got 1 plus 8 under radical equals 1 plus 2. Well, 1 plus 8 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, and 1 plus 2 is 3, so yeah, this is working out. Now, if I try negative 4, we get the square root of negative 4 plus 8, and that equals negative 4 plus 2, and negative 4 plus 8 is 4, and this is going to be negative 2, and the principal square root of 4 is 2, 2 does not equal negative 2. So this is the answer we're going to keep because it checks. And this one we're going to reject because even though it works algebraically, it doesn't satisfy the original problem. So we're going to reject this. Does anyone know the name of this solution? that works algebraically but does not satisfy the original, this is called an extraneous solution.